Welcome to Nerdarchy, for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Ted, and today I'm joined by... Nerdarchist Dave. Nathan Nerdark. And today we're going to continue our intro to D&D series, this time with Casting a Spell. We're going to start this video by thanking our sponsor, Easy Roller Dice. Whether it's your 100 set of dice or your 1 million set of dice, Easy Roller Dice for your dice rolling needs. You can jump down to the description where you can find a link to Easy Roller Dice dot com backslash nerdarchy as well as a one-time promo code for 20 percent off go get your easy roller dies all right so we're continuing with our intro to DD series and this is part two of spell casting it is so you know we kind of went through all the basics and the generics of spell casting now we're going to actually go through the mechanics of casting a spell in fifth edition dungeons and dragons no you won't actually be able to cast spells for real darn but we're going to take we're going to walk you through what it takes to cast a spell in D&D, no matter what kind of spellcaster you are. All right, so this is actually linking back to two previous videos. Last last time we talked about magic and casting spells, and in an earlier video we talked about as an action during your turn, you can cast a spell, but what does that mean? Well, so the first thing when, you're, when you want to cast a spell you have to look at is actual casting time. Uh, because in a round you only have six seconds, you only have so much time, and there's very specific actions that are going to be required. So whether it's a bonus action to cast a spell, a reaction to cast a spell, or action, your just, action. But sometimes spells take even longer than that and essentially aren't really good to, to, to cast during combat. No, you would basically, for however long it took you to cast that spell, you'd be using your action over and over again until you got it out. And then there are also some spells that have the uh, ritual tagline to them, and they just add 10 minutes to whatever the normal casting time for that spell is. Right. And if you, you cast that as a ritual. Right. And um, we, we went over that briefly in the other video. If you cast as a ritual, it doesn't require expenditure of resources. Now, when it comes to cast the casting time, the other thing that is important to note is if something allows you to cast a spell as a bonus action, that means you still have your action open to do stuff with. But one of the things you can't do with it is cast another spell. Unless it's a cantrip. Right, and that that is the the qualifier that a, can, a cantrip is a special type of spell that doesn't doesn't have that draw on you. Right. Um, so certain spells will have a casting time of a bonus action, and then there's certain class features that may allow you to then cast a spell as a bonus action as well. Example would be the sorcerer's meta magic feat, and that is a quicken spell. So then you have to refer back to that rule. So we've talked a little bit about casting time. Now we're going to get into uh, distance. So there's distances. There's different distances for different spells. Right, the range of a spell. There's certain. There's different categories for that. So so spells are are going to fall into a couple things. It could be your range is self. It could be touch, or it could be at a distance. So an example of self might be mirror image, where you can only use it on yourself. But then there's other spells that are self in the sense that they originate from you and you might actually have like a cone or a cube or something like that. And we'll get into those, those things, you know, later in when we get into the target of your spells. Then there's also touch spells. So like Shocking Grasp is a cantrip where you basically attack an enemy and use the cantrip. Other touch spells could be like Cure Wounds. This is a, a helpful spell, so you would actually be using it on your allies, but the range is touched, so you have to be within that distance uh, of your ally to, to use it. Then there's other spells where it's just going to say, certain amount of feet, you can attack with this. And as long as you can see them, and they're not uh, concealed completely, you'll be able to do the spell at that range. Yeah, it does, it does say that if someone is behind total cover, they're not going to be a valid target for your spells. Right, unless you're targeting an area, which is completely different. We'll get into that. So we also next have is a components of a spell, and they are ver verbal, somatic, and material components. So when you actually look at the spells that you're going to cast, they will have these these little tags, V, V, S, or M. Verbal is, it actually requires you to physically say something. You must enunciate some type of verbal for the... Uh, somatic means you must have your at least one hand free to, you know, manipulate the the area around you to be able to cast the spell. And then material means it it calls for either some kind of material component, a thing that is a magical doodad, or some kind of magical focus. Right, and sometimes those those uh, 
components are consumed by the spell. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they can be costly and expensive. Sometimes they're very inexpensive. And, you know, those components can be replaced, like Ted said, by using a magical focus. Now, for the verbal and somatic components, it's important to uh, note that if you cannot perform one of those actions, you're uh, in an area where you're si magically silenced, you can't talk, so you would not be able to use those spells. If you're bound and tied, then you probably can't use somatic. That's very true. Uh, and for the, the focus, those, those are typically class-dependent, so you can refer back to the player's handbook in the equipment section and get the, the focus that's going to best fit your character class. So next is duration, and duration, there are basically three different categories. So for those, we have concentration, we have a set amount of time for the duration, and we have instantaneous. Right. And even for concentration, generally there's a set amount of time that you can concentrate. So some of the important things to note about concentration is, one, if someone disrupts your concentration, then you're going to lose your spell. And how that happens is you make a special constitution saving throw versus half the damage done or DC 10 is the minimum. And, you know, if you manage to, to pass your save, you keep you keep the spell. If you fail, doesn't matter how long it can go up to, the spell is over. Now, the, one of the most important things to note about concentration spells is you can only have one of them going at a time. If you cast a second concentration spell, then you lose concentration on your first one. Yes. Uh, when, when you cast a spell that has an instant effect or instantaneous effect, the spell goes off, does not affect any kind of concentration whatsoever, and you just do whatever the spell says. And uh, as we talked about earlier, there can also be a set duration, such as 10 minutes, a minute, an hour, those kind of durations. Or, or as limited as just a single round. Yes. Yeah, And with those spells, unlike concentration, you can have as many of them going on as you want. Now, as we talked about earlier with range of self-touch and range we have uh targetings for area and those can be different types of shapes like cubes lines cylinders cones and spheres uh, but they usually originate either from self or from a point you pick these the the range and targets actually kind of interlock interlock and overlap a lot so they're really important like you said it could be self and it could just be one of those shapes right or it could be at a range and be one of those area effects as well so they, they work hand in hand pretty much. So some of them are going to be very dependent upon what they are. Typically, if you're going to cast a spell that has a cone, it, it is almost always going to originate from self and go out to its maximum area. Whereas if you're casting things that are like a sphere, you're typically hurling some kind of projectile or magical eminence out towards an area that then opens up to that, that area. Then the, the only other thing is uh, for targeted spell is actually a, a, uh, attack, spell attacks. That is where you're targeting individuals and you have to make a special attack roll with that spell in order to hit them. And for that, you're going to have to refer to line of sight and being able to actually attack your opponents. So along the same lines of, uh, of attacks, we, we get into saving throws. Spells typically have either an attack roll or a saving throw involved. And this is where they're, they're going to try and resist the effects of the spell that you're casting on them. Yeah, and for that, it's a pretty fairly straightforward and simple formula. If you're targeted by a spell that requires you to make a saving throw, you're going to be making that against the caster's difficulty class, or DC. And that's going to be figured out by having 8 plus the proficiency modifier plus the saving throw's associated ability modifier, so strength, con, dex, those kind of things, plus any miscellaneous negatives or positives. All right, so now the, la the last section on casting spells is combining magical effects. And to sum it up, they don't. If you cast, if, or if someone casts two of the same spell, uh, someone is not going to be subjected to it this, to twice in the same in the same round. So if... We're an adventuring party, and these guys both cast Bless on me. Whichever one has the better effect, that's the one that I'm going to take. Same, same thing if you cast a spell that covers an area. You can't be in that same area twice. So, you only take the damage once. That's pretty much going through the mechanics of casting a spell in order and how it breaks down into actual gameplay. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments below. While you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 
Don't forget to check out in the description below for your uh, one-time coupon for 20% off. He's a roll of dice. Or you can check us out over on nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.